right, welcome back. We are still in our map system. In this video, we're going to get into how to get these levels unlocked. We're also going to figure out how to calculate how many crowns the player has earned. One of the things we got to set up first is something that I forgot to do when we were setting up our OBJ levels. So over in our layers, if we unlock our map levels, and each one of these is going to need an instance variable. And unfortunately, I did not remember that when we made the first one. Otherwise, we could have easily gone in and edited each instance variable. Now we have to go in insert one for each level. So with OBJ level one selected, over here in the properties, we can say add an instance variable. I'm going to add a new one. And I'm going to call this map level. And I'm going to highlight all of that and control C to copy. And then I'm going to change its initial value to one because that's going to be map level one. I'll hit OK and we're done with that. And you see over here it says map level one. If we go and click on OBJ level two, we can add an instance variable. With that highlighted right there, we can say control V on the keyboard and it just pastes that map level in there. I'm going to change that to 2, and I'm going to do that for each one of these, changing the value in the map level instance variable to match which level it is. So 3, just like that. Okay, do that for the rest of them. I've done that for all seven of them. And on this one, I don't want this one to unlock. Even after you've beat level seven, I don't want this to unlock. So you could either add an instance variable for it and just set it to the same as level seven. That way, uh, later on when we work up the code for how to unlock the levels, it won't read level eight. So you could uh, do the same thing here and say seven. Or you could just not put an instance variable on it at all. However, if you continue with this map system and you add more levels, you will have to remember to go back into it and make sure all the instance variables for each level match up to the ones that you want to play or to be able to play. Now back over on our event sheet, our map event sheet, we are going to start setting up the code for both how to unlock and how to display the correct animation frame for the castle. Meaning, is it locked, unlocked? Have they played it? How many crowns did they earn? I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a group. And I'm going to call this level crowns earned. So first off, we're going to need to go into our global variables. I'm going to right click, add a new global variable. And I'm going to call this one level past. And up here where it says achievements time and achievements coin, I'm going to highlight the achievements time, copy paste, and go in here. And I'm just going to erase that. So it just says achievements. And I'm going to slide our level past variable that we just created up underneath that. So we have achievements achievements time and achievements coin. So while we're here, I'm going to add another global variable. So right click, add a global variable, and I'm going to call this one crowns. This is going to count the number of crowns that we have earned throughout the level. So I'll slide that underneath achievements as well. Okay, so back on our map event sheet, in our level crowns earned group, I'm going to add an event, and I'm going to compare one of those variables that we just created. So system compare variable. And we want the level past variable. We want to know if it is equal to one, which is going to be true. So level past equals zero means false. We have not passed the level yet. And then level past equals one means we have. So how do we get this to be uh, equal to one. We're going to need to go back to our event sheet that has the logic for when we beat the level or pass the level. And we do that in the objects event sheet. So call up your objects event sheet 
and in our diamond group this is when we collect the diamond and we run through all this code well it's here where we end up passing the level so I'm gonna add an action system set value of level passed I'm gonna change that to 1 and I'm gonna slide that up above our one second wait and then that other variable that we made was crowns in our diamond group that is going to be one of our crowns if you pass the level you earn at least one crown so I'm going to add an action say system and I'm going to type in add we'll add two crowns and we're going to add one to crowns and I'll move that up above our level past we'll be coming back to that eventually so back on our maps event sheet so what's going to happen here is once our level past variable is set to true calculate the score because we want to know how many crowns we're going to have to display we're going to call a function so let's go ahead and make that function in our functions tab I'm going to close that one up I'm going to create a new group and call this level score and I'm going to slide this up under our function start level and actually I'm going to slide our function player death down below our function start level right click over in this blank area and say add function and I'm going to call this level score and your function should be indented under the level score group there so for this function I want to calculate how many coins we've collected throughout the level and if we've beat a predetermined goal for the coins and I also want to know if, did we finish the level in less amount of time than uh, the time goal that we set for ourselves and to do that we are going to set up a couple more variables for that so if we go back over to our global variables and under our achievements time and achievements coins we're gonna add a couple more variables so I'm gonna right click and add a, a global variable and I'm gonna call this one time to beat that's gonna be a number I'm gonna slide him under achievements time and I'll make another global variable and call this coins to beat and we can slide that underneath achievements coins back over in our functions in our function here I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a sub event and that sub event is going to be system compare val uh, compare variable of coins collected and I want to know if it is greater than or equal to our goal which is one of the ones we just created was that coins to beat coins to beat right there hit done our coins collected if that number is higher than or equal to the coins to beat value which we will set up here in just a minute I want to add another crown so let's add an action say system add to crowns one so that will be our other crown we had a crown for uh, passing the level we have a crown for beating the coins collected goal and then we're going to add one more and that's going to be for beating the total time so up here on our function I'm going to right click and add another sub event say system compare variable and that is going to be our total time and I want to know if it is less than or equal to because we want to beat the time so less than or equal to and that's going to be that other variable we just set up which is uh, time to beat and then we can just grab this highlight it uh, hold control click and drag out a copy down here now one of the things that is going to happen is while a variable comparison is true it is going to perform this action 
So what's going to happen is if we do collect more than enough coins to beat the goal, it is going to add one to crowns every tick of the game, which is every frame that it plays. So at 60 frames per second, you're going to earn 60 crowns every second until we reset the variable. So we don't want that. I'm going to come over here in this blank area next to this event and I'm going to double click to add another condition and I'm going to say system and just type in trigger once while true and that will allow us to only perform this one time. With that highlighted I'm going to do what we just did with the crowns variable. I'm going to hold control, click and drag out a copy down here and that is our level score function. I'm going to close that up and back on our maps event sheet when we pass the level we want to immediately calculate that score so let's add an action to that go to functions and call our level score function so now we can set up the code that uh, reads all these values so everything that's going to take place in this group after this event is going to only be able to take place if this is true. So which means everything from this point down is going to be a sub event. So I'm going to right click in this area and add a sub event. And I'm going to go to our sprites, our levels, and I'm going to grab OBJ level one. And I'm going to go to our compare frame, our animation frame. And I want to know if the animation frame that we are on is less than the amount of crowns that we have earned, then we're going to be able to run the code that we're going to create, which will calculate what frame it should be on. So basically, if we've earned one crown, the animation frame, if it is locked, is going to be zero. And if it is unlocked, but we haven't earned any crowns yet, it will be animation frame one. So if this is less than or equal to the amount of crowns that we've earned, then it'll be able to run the code. As long as we have passed the level, this will run. So we want to know that no crowns have been earned, so I'm going to make the value that crowns variable. So if the animation frame is equal to or less than however many crowns we've earned, I'll hit done. And then I want to know that we are on this level, which for this one is level one. And we can do that by our level playing variable that we created. Double click in this area over here. We can add another condition. Go system, compare variable. And I want level playing is equal to the level that we're on here. So that'll be level one. So now that we are checking for no crowns have been earned yet and we're on this level, now we can set up what happens. So this is where our array comes in. So before we go any further, I want to explain a little bit about arrays. This is a very basic explanation of what an array is and how one works. An array is essentially a grid. This is a 2D array. We have an X and a Y. Here's our X plane and our Y plane. In code, we would read these numbers from left to right as our x value. And then our y plane would be read from top to bottom. For example, if in our code we called coordinates out of a 2D array that we have created, we would call the x value first, and then a comma, and then the y value. Let's say that each one of these boxes has a different piece of information in it. And we want to access the information that is located in, uh, let's just say, 3, 5. Well, x is always the first number when calling an array. So for our x, we would go to 3. And for our y, we would go to 5. So we would have 3 and then 5. This, whatever information is stored in this square right here would be the information we're accessing in our code using that formula. That is basically how uh, an array is set up. Well, a 2D array at least. Let's just make up a scenario here. I'm going to name some games for our x values. So I'm going to say that 
uh, in our code, we will assign a game to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, on our x value. Let's say that 0 is Zelda, all Zelda games, and 1 is Mario Brothers games, and 2 will be, uh, let, let's say, Final Fantasy games. And then our Y value represent gaming consoles. Uh, 0 will be the, the NES, the original Nintendo. One will be the Super Nintendo. And two will be, uh, we'll say the Switch. Uh, that'll be a W for Switch. So now we can say, okay, how many Zelda games were on the NES? Not sure how many total, but I think maybe two. Mario Brother games for the NES? Couldn't tell you. Uh, let's say there was five. Final Fantasy games on the NES. Again, I'm not sure. We'll just say uh, four. Okay. Now what about the Super Nintendo? Zelda on the Super Nintendo? Uh, I only remember the one. I'm not sure. Mario Brother games? Let's just say there's like six. And I'm just making these numbers up. Final Fantasy, there was a bunch. Let's just say there was eight. And the Switch? Uh, well, we have like two Zelda games so far and probably a couple of Mario related games. We'll just say three. And I have no idea. We'll say one Final Fantasy if there is even one. This is uh, a very crude example, but now we have a grid that tells us how many versions of each one of these games there were for each one of these consoles. So if I want to know uh, how many Mario Brother games were on the Super Nintendo? Well, I would go over to the X value of 1, because this is 0, this is 1. And then the Super Nintendo is 0, 1 on the Y value. So in code, I would call for the number or the value in the XY would be 1, 1, which would lead us to 1, 1. That would be 6. Like I said, a very crude example, but you kind of get the idea that we have a grid and we can access information in each one of these little boxes by using uh, the X and Y values. And that is a 2D array. A 3D array is more like a cube. Here you have three avenues to uh, access information. Uh, you would have your grid right here on the front it'd be something like that. Then you would have uh, your grid over here. And that would probably be your Z actually, but uh, there's a grid there. And then there's another grid going through the middle of your cube. In your code, you would have an X, a Y, and a Z. And depending on what those X, Y, Z values are would determine where in this cube that information is held. But we're not going to get into three-dimensional arrays, so I'm not gonna go too much further into that. In fact, we're not using 2D arrays either. I just wanted to give an explanation of how a 2D array works because now the one-dimensional array that we're going to use should be a lot easier to understand. So where you had an X and Y for a two-dimensional array, a one-dimensional array has only an X value. And this is what we're going to be using. So the way that we are going to use this array is our zero, our zero, zero here, we aren't going to use at all. This will always be blank or equal to zero. The rest of these are going to hold the value of how many crowns we've earned or the player has earned while playing the level. And each one of these numbers, the X value, represents what level we're storing that information into. If we are playing and we go into level one, and let's say we only get two crowns, we will code it to record that value into this slot. And then let's say we play level two, we only score uh, one crown. Level three, uh, we get all three crowns. Level four, only two crowns. Uh, level five, uh, two crowns. Level six, only one crown. 
and you can keep going. So what will happen is when the map loads in our game, the code is going to access this array and it's going to read the value for each level. So now when we leave the game, when we go play another level, when we come back into the map, this information stays the same. And each time we access the map, the code will access these numbers and display the appropriate amount of crowns. So what if we just beat level six and instead of playing level seven, we want to go back and play level one. Well, the way the code is going to be set up, the only way that this number is going to change is if you get a number higher than two. Let's say we only get one crown whenever we replay level one. Well, this is going to stay two. And then we play it again and we get three. Well, our code is going to say, oh, that's higher than the number we have stored in here. So let's change it to whatever that number is. So now this becomes three. And when we go back into the map, it will recognize this number has changed and it will change the amount of crowns to be displayed. And when we get further on in this series, we will actually save this entire array into memory. So whenever you exit out of the game completely and you come back and play it, say two days later, this information will exist in the array and it will read it every time we come back to the map. I just wanted to explain how arrays work and especially how this array is going to work in this project. We are going to access and add to this array in different parts of this event sheet. So let's go over here to our object types folder and under that is the input folder. I'm going to right click and add new object type and I want this first one, the array, and then over here with that selected, I'm going to highlight this and rename it uh, AR underscore crowns earned. This is the array for how many crowns we have earned. We're going to store that number in this array. And before we move on, let's go over here to our properties of our crowns earned array and set up the dimensions. So for the width, I'm going to do one for each level that we have. So we have eight levels, just make that eight. The height and depth can stay at one because we're only going to be storing one number for each level. Okay, so let's add an action on this event over here and go into our input, go to our array. Our width goes you know, from left to right, so that's one through eight, and that's going to be on our x-axis. So we want to set the value at the x position. Click set at x and for the x we are going to call the value that is in our level plane. Put our level plane variable in there and then the value is going to be the number that is stored in our crowns variable. So now we can configure what animation frame we're supposed to be on. So let's go ahead and add another action. Go to our sprites, levels, our OBJ level one, and I want to set frame. So in our animations frame, if you remember, we had frame zero is locked, frame one is unlocked, frame two, three, and four correspond to how many crowns one through three are above the castle sprite. So I want to take the number, which is how many crowns we've earned in the level, which will be uh, the coins, the time, and the level passed, are going to add up to one, two, or three crowns. And I want to add that number to our animation frames. But if I just did crowns, and we let's say we earned two crowns. If I put in the crowns variable here, it would read two. So it would go to animation frame two, which would be the one that has one crown. But we earned two crowns. So if we go to frame number one, then add the number of crowns we earned, then it will give us the correct animation frame. And to get that number, we're going to access it from the array. Since we set the value up here, we set the value at level playing, which if we're playing level one, it's going to be in slot number one. If we're playing level two, it'll be in slot number two. So it will tell us which slot on the array that we can put that number in. 
So I want to get the value from that slot. 1 plus, and let's call up our array. There's our array. We want to get our array, and then we want to use an expression to find where in the array to get the value from. And that expression is going to be if we type uh, a dot and then at, and then in parentheses, we can put in our level playing variable and in parentheses. So this is the formula. We're going to start at frame one, and then we're going to add whatever the value is at the level playing spot in our array. So hit done, and for example, let's say we earned two crowns by playing the level. We're at level one, so level playing is going to equal one. Crowns is going to equal two. So down here, we're going to say one plus the value at level one. So this is basically one plus two equals three. And over on our maps, if we go into our level, frame three has two crowns above it. So that is the formula. That's how that works. Now we need a way to unlock the level. So over in our global variables tab, I'm going to right click and add another global variable. And this one's going to be called level unlock. And I'm going to slide level unlock up into the levels system. And then I'm going to go into it again and I'm going to change the initial value to one. No matter what, even if you start the game over, level unlock will always equal one first. So back on our map event sheet, I'm going to come up here and on this event over here off to the left side, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add another sub event. Go to system, compare variable, and I want that one we just created, which is level unlock. And I'm going to say if it is less than or equal to, and then the value is going to be our level playing. Here we are on level one. So this is going to read if level unlock is less than or equal to level playing, which is one, then we'll be able to run this code. But because it's a sub event of all of this, this cannot happen until all of this has happened. This will never happen unless we have passed a level. Let's add an action, go to system, and we're going to set the value. And I want to set the value of our level unlock to itself. So I'm going to say level unlock plus one. So if we get to this part of the code, that means we've passed the level, we've calculated how many crowns we've earned, and then we're going to take that variable, the value of our level unlock, which right now is one, and we're going to say one plus one. So now level unlock equals two. And as we create this code for additional levels, this number will keep increasing and it'll keep checking to see if it has passed its current value. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier to read. I am going to right click and add a group and I'm going to call this in lowercase level underscore one crowns. And then I'm going to take this group and I'm going to slide it up underneath our first event here. And then I'm going to take this code, make sure all of this is highlighted, and I'm going to slide it up into that group. So now we have our level passed check. If we pass the level, then we can start going down and changing all this code. Now that we have this completed this way, I'm going to close this. I'm going to highlight it, the entire group here. And on the keyboard, I'm going to hold Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Do that for all seven playable levels. So we have level one, level two, level three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to close all these up. I'm going to go in and change all these so they read consistently level and then the number and then crowns without the number on the end.
So now if we go into our level two group, we're going to have to change a few things to match our level two. So if we highlight this animation frame check here, we can hit R on the keyboard and we can change this to OBJ level two. And we also want to change our level playing variable. We want to know if it is on level two. I'm going to drag that out a little. So that is all we have to change for each one because this is calculating all these variables that are going to change through other calculations. So let's go to our level three and do the same thing. Highlight it, hit R on the keyboard. We'll change that to OBJ level three and our level playing. We want to check if it is on level three. So let's do that for all of our levels. All right, we can close those up. Those should all work and calculate how many crowns get displayed over the castle. Okay, now we need to figure out what our goals are to know if we've done enough to collect a crown. So we know if we pass a level, we get one crown. And then we also made these uh, time to beat and coins to beat variables, but we haven't given them any values yet. So let's go to our functions tab and let's open up our function start level. Up here we made this parameter that let us choose which direction we want the player to start the level facing. We're going to add a couple more parameters to let us decide what our time and coin goal is for each level. So if we right click here on the function, we can go down and say add parameter. And I'm going to call this one time goal. And then I'll do the same thing again, add a parameter. I'm going to call this one coin goal. So now that we've added these parameters to the function, if we go to our level one event sheet, and remember we uh, have this function called before we just had the direction and we chose left. Now it has added time goal and coin goal. So now we can manually type in what the coin goal and time goal is for each individual level when we call the function on each level. So if we go back to our function, if I put a number into one of these parameters, there's nothing calling for it because these are local variables. These don't go anywhere outside of this group. So I need a global variable to read these numbers. So let's add an action, go to system and say set value. And I want to set the value of coin goal to our uh, coins, uh, coins to beat variable, because that's the goal that we're calculating in our map event sheet. And then I will add another action, go to system, set value, and I want time goal, this uh, local variable here, our parameter, and I want that to read our time to beat variable. And then we can highlight those and drag them to the top. As soon as the start level function is run, whatever numbers we have entered into these two parameters is going to change the value of our global variables to these numbers. In our level score, this coins to beat variable will now have a value that we enter and we'll know how many coins we need to collect to beat that value and earn that crown. Let's go to our level one and I'm going to just add uh, a time goal of 200. This is just temporary. And our coin goal, I will say uh, three. So over here on our level one layout, I'm going to unlock our player layer and I'm going to move our player all the way to the top so that we're closer to the diamond. So this doesn't take as long. And we have one, two, three, four coins that we could collect before we hit the diamond. We could definitely earn the coin goal crown and then we'll earn one from collecting the diamond and if we collect the coins and get the diamond real quick, 
we'll get it before the timer reaches 200. That should give us three crowns. And before we play this, we need to go into our next menu event sheet. Because once we collect the diamond, it sends us to the next menu in our objects event sheet. When we pass the level, we get sent to menu next. So if we call up our menu next event sheet down here, it says go to level one. But what I want to do is I want to go to the map. So between each level, we're going to go back to the map because we need to go to the map and make sure that this code is getting run in between each level. So that will update all the values that we need to update. And I just want to make sure that on our map level that our event sheet is set to map. So I'm going to go into level one and I'm going to test this out. I'm going to collect some coins. We have three. We should get the coin crown now. We beat the time, we beat the coins, and we pass the level. We should have three crowns. I'm going to hit next. Hmm. Okay, so we, or I have, done something incorrectly. So I'm going to look at our functions. Okay, I did this backwards. In here, I'm setting our time goal, what we enter in our level one event sheet here, I'm setting that to the time to beat, which is zero, and the coins to beat, which is zero, because that's how the default number is set up. So in the end, we collect three or four coins, that's more than zero, so that works, but our time, we're not beating it because time is zero, we're going to be over the zero amount of time always. So I got this backwards. So if we go in, double click into that, and we change time goal to time to beat, and then we change the value to time goal. And do the same thing with the coins. We want to set our coins to beat to our coin goal. So back on the map, I'm going to play this again. And if we collect some coins, we have beaten the coin and the time and level pass. That should be three crowns. There it is. Our system is working mathematically the way that it is supposed to. Now I'm going to debug the layout if we go to our system and down to our global variables we can uh, select which ones we want you just hit the I icon I have over here on the watch tab added our array sheet the crowns variable level pass level playing and level unlock so level unlock is always set at one to start out so we're just gonna watch these numbers as we play through so I'm gonna select the level and right away you see level playing change to one. We got three coins, get four for good measure, pass the level, we beat the time. We pass the level so it gave us that one crown. It hasn't calculated the other two crowns yet because we're not on the map event sheet yet. But it has already given us that one crown for passing the level and level passed uh, went to true and then our level unlock is still at one and nothing has changed on our array. But when we hit next, all these values changed. We got our three crowns. See, it added our other two crowns to three. And level unlock went to two. So now, level two should be unlocked. But we haven't set up the level unlock logic yet. So that's not going to happen. And it recorded here on level one, because we're not using uh, the zero slot, here on one, it gave us our value of three. So everything is calculating correctly. I'm going to exit out of that and now we can set up the unlocking feature. So I'm going to close these up. We don't need these for now. Okay, I'm going to right click, add a group, and I'll call this unlock levels. 
let's add an event to our unlock levels group and grab our level obj level one sprite and we want to compare the instance variable that we made for it and we want to know if it is greater than our level unlock variable value then we are going to set the animation frame to zero so let's go add an action go to sprites our levels grab our level obj level one set the frame to zero so i'm going to right click and add another group and i'm going to say unlock level one i'm going to slide that up into our unlock levels and then I will slide this event into that group. So yours should look something like that. So now our levels are locked. Okay, if we take this, highlight the whole group, and Control c to copy, Control v to paste, first off, you can see that our group name has changed to unlock level 2. It did that for us because we made sure the number we want to change is on the end of the name. So for level two, we need to change our objects to OBJ level two. So highlight that R on the keyboard. So this gives us all the objects we can replace OBJ level one with. So I'm gonna pick level two and I'll do the same here. Highlight this R on the keyboard and we'll have to scroll down and find level two. So what this says is our map level instance variable for level two, which we set to two, if it is greater than level unlock, then our animation frame is going to be zero, which means it's locked. So now we're going to set up something that is going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to tell us that we've passed the previous level and this level, the second level can now be unlocked and it'll set it to the appropriate frame. The other thing that this is going to do is make it to where if you pass a level and let's say you only earn one crown, and you want to play the level again to see if you can earn more crowns. Well, let's say you play it again and you still only earn one crown. Well, that's going to add to the crown value in that spot on the array, whatever level we're playing. So if you replay a level, we want to reset the value of that level in the array so that when you pass that level, it will recalculate the new value of how many crowns you've earned. But because of the checks that we're doing, it will only take place if you've earned more than what you had already earned the first time around. So let's go ahead and set it up and hopefully this will make a lot more sense. I'm going to add an event to our level one and I'm going to grab our OBJ level one and I'm gonna scroll down to our instance variable, compare instance variable of map level and I want to know if it is less than or equal to level unlock. Hit done. So this says map level, which would be one for OBJ level one. If it is less than or equal to level unlock, which is also one by default. So that makes this true. We will add some actions. Let's go to our input, our array, and let's set the value at X. And I want to set the value at whichever level we happen to be playing at that time. So that's going to be level playing. So if you remember, our array starts at zero and we aren't using zero. We're skipping to one so that each slot in the array matches up with what level we're on. So I want to say whichever level we're playing, that will be a numerical value plus one. That'll get us to the right spot on the array. And I want to set that value to zero. So that's going to set it zero in our array and then it's going to add up however many crowns we earn. Once you pass it, it will always set it back to zero and then calculate the score again. So let's add another action. Let's go get our OBJ level one again and I want to set the frame to one, which is our unlocked, plus however many crowns we earned, which is going to be stored in the array. So let's call up our array, crowns earned, and then I want to know which slot in the array to get that value from. So dot, at, and then in parentheses, I'm going to add the specific level number, which 
for us is going to be 1 because we're on level 1. If we used a variable like the level playing variable here like we did in our level crowns earned, that variable changes each time we play a different level. We don't want this value to change. We want this here to always read 1. Hit done. So I don't want any of this to take place unless our level number is less than our current level unlock value. And I also want to add another check to this. So I'm going to double click in this area right here. And I'm going to go grab our OBJ level 1 and I'm going to compare frame. And I want to say if it is less than or equal to and I want to know that it is either locked or unlocked with no crowns. So that's going to be either less than or equal to 1. I'm going to take this block of code, highlight it, hold control, click and copy, drag out a copy to unlock level 2. So it should look like that. Now here's the thing. This doesn't do anything for us because we already set the animation frame for this first level to be unlocked. This will actually never be true. So we can just highlight that and delete it. And then down here in our unlock level 2 group, we need to change these to read level 2. So highlight R on the keyboard, change it to level 2. Same thing here. And then over here, remember we set this number to which level we were on specifically right here in the parentheses. So we need to first, we need to change this object. So R on the keyboard and we need to pick which object we want to replace. And we want to replace OBJ level one and we want to replace it with OBJ level two. If we go into the action part of it, we can change which position in the array we want it to go to, which is going to specifically be level two. It's a lot going on. I don't know if my ability to explain it makes too much sense to you. I certainly hope it does. If you're still having any trouble understanding how this system works, I encourage you to use the debug layout and make sure that you have the array selected. And just up here where it says data, just hit that I, go over to watch, and it will show up in your watch tab. And that way you can watch this without all the other information playing. And you can see how it works through each step. Okay, I'm going to play level one. Collect some coins. And finish the level. I'm going to go to next. And there we have it. We earned our three coins and it unlocks level two. Now we don't have a level two to go to. So whenever I click on it, it just gave me everything and you can see it even added it down here. The one that's locked uh, has no functionality. So this will actually not happen once we set up a level two. So we will certainly get to that here shortly. As for the rest of this, if you haven't uh, guessed already, we do have to do this for each level. So I'm going to highlight our unlock level two. I'm going to copy and paste. Uh oh, there we go. And that's level four. I'm going to paste five, six, and seven. And then I'll go up to my unlock level three and do the same thing we just did for two. I'm going to highlight it, press R on the keyboard, change that to level three. Do the same thing here. Change that to level three. Same thing here. Same thing here. We want to replace level two with number three. And on these, I'll do this again. If you don't see what you need, always read this top part. It'll tell you exactly what uh, you're there for. This one just says, pick the object to be replaced. And then we'll replace this one. So we'll go ahead, replace that with three. And then let's not forget to change this part we want to make sure this number corresponds with which level we're on. So do that for all seven groups.
everything should be replaced. All the objects should match the number of what level group it is in. And then the number in the array should also match. That should get all our levels unlocked as we play through. I'm going to close all those up. And I'm going to move our unlock levels above level crowns earned. And I think that is it for this part of the map, which means we only have one more part for this map system, and that is our map marker, which we will cover in the next video. So thanks for uh, sticking it out through this explanation. It can get kind of uh, confusing if you're not real familiar with arrays, but I hope that I have given enough information to help make sense of it all. I'm going to end this one here in the next video. We will work on our map marker and then move on from there. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to save.